Now that it's December, I'm going to revive the holiday tradition that I started last year. He's two years in a row of tradition. Um, I'm going to do a mailbag every Monday through December. Uh, partly because my backlog of stuff is just getting out of control and partly because, gee, it's apparently a season of giving. So here we go. I will give you reasons to spend your money on Chinese stuff. So let's get at her. Okay. We have one times remote control value, $6. This is the heaviest one of the whole bunch. So, uh, let's get in and see what one times remote control really is. Oh, it's not one times, obviously. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It is 10 servos, which is good. I, obviously I ordered these a while ago, um, but it's good because my stockpile is dwindling. Looks like I've only got four left after doing the, uh, the yard controls a couple months back. If you didn't see that, I'll put a link up there to, uh, to that project that ate up a handful of these. So now I have more to add to my collection. Excellent. 10 pieces RC micro SG 90 servo nine gram for Arduino Aereo Modulissimo Align Trex 450 airplane helicopters accessories. So I got 10 of these from AliExpress, unusually. Um, I don't order that much stuff from those guys. Anyway, uh, 10 of them for $14.72, aka $1.48 per free shipping to Canada back when I ordered it. And still now, that's excellent. I think we've all seen these before. Uh, these are just the cheapest available little servo motors. Um, you control them by by sending uh, pulses to them of various durations and they will rotate um, over 180 degree uh, rotation. Yeah. Okay, the next thing, plastic sheet. Uh-huh. wonder why they've all standardized on plastic sheet as their go-to lie for customs. I mean, it never is. In this case, it is a single chip. I uh, can't see for that label. Let me unbag it here. Aha! Uh -huh. This is an AT Mega 328P, which is the brains of the operation between behind your standard Arduino. Specifically, the classic Arduino Uno. There it is right there. So, I, I'm sure I ordered this one so that I could... Uh, experiment at some point with just doing my own minimal Arduino type thing on a breadboard or embedded in a project. I mean, I could just peel that one out and put that in, but then that leaves this guy with no brains. So I got a standalone one and I'm thinking if I remember back far enough, I'm thinking I ordered this one at auction so that the price wasn't horrendous. Not that they're that expensive anyway, but you know, AT Mega 328P-PU uh, dip package dip 20 with Arduino Uno bootloader. That's the keywords that I uh, searched for. And that's what it said on the listing that I bought it from. But that listing is gone, and the seller that I bought it from, Go Win Electronic, is no longer selling that. Uh, I will link to a search term for basically that if you. Uh, if you're looking for these, I paid two dollars and four cents. Um, the cheapest one that I can find on a quick search right now is three eighty nine Canadian, um, and this is just a random dude. But it's as I said, this is the brains of the operation between behind an Arduino Uno. What do we have here? We have <laughs> this is clever. We have the sensor. Wonder what the sensor is. Nice big bag of stuff. There's multiple things in there. Okay. Four or five of them. Oh, these are these little joystick modules. Okay, these are the same ones 
that I was using when I was experimenting, doing my little, dipping my toes into a robotics experiment uh, a few weeks ago. Um, basically, it's just two potentiometers, an X and a Y. Let's zoom in here. One potentiometer there, one there. So when we move this direction, it's affecting this potentiometer. And when we go this way, it's affecting that potentiometer. And they come out there, variable resistor X, variable resistor Y. And also, there's a little tactile switch there, so when you push down, it clicks. And that comes with the switch. You get ground in 5 volts, which I'm guessing are applied across the two outside uh, um, pins of the potentiometer. Uh, there and there. And then the variable resistance, uh, VRX and VRY, and then... The switch. I'm not sure if the switch goes high or low. I guess it doesn't really matter that much. You just program accordingly. But I got five of these. So these are probably going to make their way into either a remote control project or that robotic kind of project. But I ordered these way before I knew I was going to do that. Um, so that's interesting. I wonder how much five of them cost me. Five piece dual axis breakout module shield joystick game controller for Arduino PS2H. I'm starting to think that this last letter that these guys are putting on there tends to stand for their their store name. Um, although this isn't really a store that I would expect to be carrying this kind of stuff. You never know on, on eBay from these Chinese sellers anymore. So Health Beauty 360 sold me five of these things and that's not actually what i paid the price has gone up i paid two dollars and eighty cents american or three dollars and sixty nine cents canadian but still less than a buck a piece that's not a bad price all right next thing in is digital voltmeter and digital voltmeter i think the last time i opened something that said digital voltmeter it was an electronic christmas tree I wonder what this one is Maybe. No, it's not digital voltmeters either. It's a couple of Nokia 5150 type display modules. Um, as seen previously in my homemade little servo tester adjuster thing. Uh, let me just power this guy up here. So these just like these just do. A, uh, a monochrome display you can see by the diagonals on the on the seven and nine there actually let's go down to something else here yeah you can see by the diagonals there that's basically the pixel size you got to work with I don't know if you can go down to the finer pixel size I can't remember it's been a while since I uh, programmed this but that's basically what these ones are and I'm I'm not going to bother soldering them up because I've got this one to play with right here. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what they are. They're just really simple little displays to to program. This particular one, I've got the back lights turned on. So if I were to turn off the workbench lights, it becomes super visible in the dark. Uh, and I guess the refresh rate's messing with my camera a little bit, but you get the idea. DIY blue slash white 84 by 48 Nokia 5150 LCD display screen module module for Arduino um, from LS 110 1983 normally having two of them come in the same package two of the same thing you'd think that I'd ordered two from the same listing but no one I ordered from an auction and the other one I just actually no I think they were both auctions because they both came in at slightly different prices and they're both lower prices than sort of the going rate for these things, give or take. They're close, but anyway, this one I paid two dollars and eighty-five cents for, and the other one I paid three dollars and two cents for. And I'm thinking that one of them is the blue backlight, and one of them is the white backlight, which is the one that I showed you. Um, I don't really feel like soldering the pin hitters. Well. Actually, no, I'll stop being lazy. I'll solder up the pin hinders and we'll just see what they actually are. How about that? 
Okay. There's ow. The two of those guys soldered up. There it is. Toss them into here one at a time and see what happens. Okay, so that one does have a blue backlight to it. But why is not it displaying? Hmm. Let's try the other one. This one is displaying. And it's yeah, that's kind of bluish, isn't it? I'd say so. Where's the original one? I guess those are all kind of bluish, aren't they? Hmm. Let me just try this one again. Maybe I had it plugged in goofy or something in my breadboard. That can happen. No, that one just doesn't want to display. Huh. Good thing they're cheap. I wonder if I uh, got something wrong in the pinout. Or did I make a solder bridge or something? Oh, it looks okay. I don't know. I diagnose that later. For now, let's uh, move on. And the last thing is tripod. Oh, well, small for a tripod. Oh no, that's exactly what it is. It's it's a mini tripod. Oh, there's something else in there. Oh, -ho! that's handy dandy. It's a, it's the selfie stick adapter. It's exactly the same as the thing that my phone is currently being gripped into right up there. Now, how am I going to show a phone gripped into this while using my phone? as a camera. Well, that's just a little plastic knobbly bit that holds into there. Hmm. Let me see if I can borrow a phone from somebody else in the house. Let's use my wife's old LG G2, which she doesn't use anymore because it turned out to be a bit of a lemon. Actually, a lot of a lemon. Uh, this one went through two different screen slash digitizers and then it started screwing up again, so we just did to hell with it and bought a nice, reliable Samsung. So, uh, this thing basically, this little tripod -y, can these legs are all bendy. They call it, I think, an octopod. So you can put it on uneven footing and get yourself uh, your shot. You can clamp it around things that's kind of this is kind of why I got it because you can clamp it around stuff unusual shaped things to, and it sort of holds on and I guess it's that's not bad so you can clamp it onto stuff and when I'm shooting around here especially the railroad stuff especially the, under the railroad stuff I tend to have trouble finding a way to get a camera in position when it's not in my way, but can still show what's going on. So I'm hoping that this will be just the tool for the job. And it's also got a little swivelly head here. So you can get all kinds of funky delic angles. That should be cool. Oops. Can that go? Okay, yeah, so that can go anywhere and lock it in place. It's not the high-tech, it's most robust thing. It's mostly plastic. But 
it's doing the job. I think it should be good. New portable flexible sponge octopus tripod for camera mobile phone by Air. I've uh, got this from Sun Dash Thing 28 for two dollars and sixty three cents. If you get it without the little phone clip, it's only a buck thirty one or ninety nine American pennies. Um, and it's uh, because of the postal strike, which has recently ended, but I guess there's still a backlog at the border, so. This guy's not shipping to Canada right now, but obviously when I bought it for something so cheap, I got it for free shipping. What do we say down here? Product name Sponge 3 Tripod, as opposed to other numbers that would be a tripod, I guess. Um, it's got a quarter to any screw mount on the top. Yes, it does. Uh, 58 grams, which is very little. Maximum load, half a kilogram. That's actually pretty good. Um, but, uh, and that's going to be more than you need for pretty much any phone. Uh, you know, built-in spring swivel can control the size of the fixture. That's the phone grabber thing. Yeah, it's just a cheap little tripod, which hopefully will come in handy in the right application. And here we have today's mailbag items in all their splendor. Let's just go through shipping times quickly. The joysticks took me 30 days to get here. The 18 Mega 328 took 20 days. I think that's the winner. Uh, the Nokia displays took 50, uh, 25 days. And I've got to investigate that one to find out if it's really bad or if I screwed up. Um, what else we got left here? The servos took five weeks. And the tripod is the slow poke. This time it took two months to get here. Thanks everybody for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, and as usual, and a special thanks go out to my Patreon supporters who help me pay for my habit, uh, hobby, uh, uh, mailbag stuff. Um, there's not that many of them. They don't pay for the whole thing, but they help me not, uh, not lose too much money on this endeavor. And of course, all these things are going to go into hobby projects. So the money's not as important to this whole enterprise. It's just, yeah, if if somebody's uh, willing to throw a buck in the tip jar, I'm happy to accept it and thank them for it. All right, thank you again for watching. I will talk to you later. Oh, so how did the uh, new and improved uh, sign work out for you? Uh, let me know what you think. Bye.